Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Space Corps Foundation's interview series for women of color in space. I'm Nivedita Raju, Director of Legal Affairs and Research at Space Corps. At the foundation, we firmly believe in the benefit of outer space for all of humankind, which is why we're thrilled to be launching an interview series to amplify voices of minority communities in the sector, starting with women of color. Each episode will feature a different speaker and highlight their experiences in the sector. Our inaugural episode features Ruvimbo Samanga. Ruvimbo is a space policy analyst from Zimbabwe, specializing in the traditional and new space African sector. Welcome, Ruvimbo. To start with, Ru, could you please tell us more about your background and your primary projects? Indeed. So a little bit about my background. I have a background in law. I studied two undergraduate degrees in law and then I went on to a master's degree in international trade and investment law. All three of my degrees were obtained from the University of Pretoria and it was during my penultimate year of my second undergraduate degree that I discovered I had a passion for space law and policy. I was nearing the end of my second degree and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do and specialize in but I've always been a risk taker and someone who enjoys figuring things out. So a lot of soul searching was happening at that time. And I happened to stumble upon the Manfred Lacks Space Law Moot Court competition, which we took part in, in 2017. And I was a speaker that year. I ended up coming away as the best African speaker. And of course, we advanced to the world finals where we represented Africa. And unfortunately, we didn't do so well, but I knew I loved space law then because despite all of the long hours, I was still motivated to continue pursuing it. So the next year, I coached the university's team. And once again, we advanced to the world finals. And this time, we ended up becoming the first African team in the entirety of the 26-year history of the competition to win and It was such a turning point. It opened us up to so many opportunities in the industry. And of course, I had always had an innate interest in outer space. So having that career prospect almost seemed natural. And from there, I've just been immersed in getting to know as much as I can on how I can really uh, contribute to the field of space law and policy since Fantastic. Um, I'm so happy to hear that as well. Manfred Lax is an incredible learning experience, especially in terms of international law. Many of us at Space Court have also been involved at different stages of the competition. I, I was wondering, could you share a bit more about AgriSpace, um, the technology and uh, the, its potential impact on farming practices? AgriSpace is a bespoke geospatial solutions provider operating here in Zimbabwe. Using geospatial data and geospatial technology, we hope to support food security by giving farmers all of the necessary data and information that they need to optimize their farming production. Currently, as it stands, the the statistics in Zimbabwe are not looking very good on the food security front. At least half of the population is food insecure. That would be about 8 million people. And this is all as a result of climate change, an intense drought, as well as irregular rainfall, and of course, the persisting and fluctuating economy. So we're hoping to bring tech innovation to farming, understanding that Zimbabwe is an agri-based nation and supporting the over 9,600 small-scale farmers who are eking out a living in the difficult conditions. And we hope that by using satellite imagery, Farmers will know what to plant, where to plant, how to plant, and when to plant, most importantly. And all of this is really to give the farmer greater security, not only in the harvest and the yield, but they can also use this information to access vital credit insurance and financing from financial institutions. So it's a very comprehensive policy innovation that looks not only at the farming production, but everything from the supply chain to logistics, even to knowledge sharing. Because again, it will develop a community of users who will share sustainable farming practices in order to not only integrate tech, but integrate a communal based approach to farming. My goodness, that's amazing. Um, and I think a, truly a testament to the, the power of space technology. Um, on that note, I wanted to ask, Space Court Foundation fo- focuses on increasing accessibility to space law and education. 
was there anything about your own educational experience that was particularly challenging? Indeed, we encountered a number of challenges, I think even starting from when we took part in the competition. As always, I think the biggest challenge is accessing information. Even though our library had sufficient resources, it was nothing near our developed country counterparts. And as well, some of the resources you often find are paid for and are quite expensive, especially by student means. So definitely the first bottleneck was how can we get the information we need to formulate a competent and well-informed stance on whatever legal issue we were dealing with. And I think second to that was also just um, the political will, I guess, in support of the regions we come from. Coming from Africa, of course, we have a burgeoning space industry, but a lot still has to be done to not only transfer that awareness to the ordinary citizen, but also receive the requisite governmental support that we need to fulfill some of these endeavors that we are working on. And you'll find that a lack of political will also translates into a lack of enabling policy environment. So again, the journey was mired by overcoming a lot of hurdles that simply just weren't accounted for in the legal space and having to seemingly develop the law as you were going and creating that precedent. So I believe that all law students at some point will encounter the challenge of looking for case law or any kind of jurisprudence relating to whatever subject theme they're working on. But I think owing to just how niche space law is, that task becomes just a little more tricky, especially from a developing country context. That really resonates with me. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, universities in India face similar constraints as well. So I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head when you mentioned that this is a struggle that we, that we face. And this is definitely one of the foundation's goals as well. On the subject of students, given the lack of representation in our field, what are the tools that future students from our communities need if they're looking to get involved? I always hammer time and time again that everyone needs a mentor, everyone needs a role model that they can look up to. And I believe it's important, especially for minority communities, because it really does a great deal to eliminate that feeling of isolation. And I personally have profited so much from having a mentor. Her name is Professor Timia Biagana Bajanti. She is a successful Black woman in aerospace, and I look up to her so much, not only for just the authority that she has in the industry, but her desire to contribute to Africa, to contribute to the youth, and to contribute to developing country issues is so remarkable, and she really embodies a lot of the kind of practitioner I would hope to be someday. And the benefits of having a mentor, not only does it streamline your approach to your career journey, but it also allows you to really engage in activities that you might not previously have had opportunity to, to, to engage in. You get to be in spaces that are way beyond your career years. And I think that's the beauty of it because a mentor guides you through things that you know, they've been through before and it just makes it a whole lot easier for you. But I think most importantly, it's a safe space. It's a space for you to feel welcomed and it's a space that will continuously encourage you that indeed it is possible. That's great advice. I, I, I do wonder though, did you consciously think of these tools while you were job hunting when you started out as a, as a fresh graduate? We've all, we've all been in that boat. So I'm curious to know. Oh, not at all. I think uh, as any person, whenever you start off, you want to try and do everything by yourself. But I think it naturally came about because as you go on your career journey, you inevitably encounter people who model the kind of practitioner you would want to be. And I just slowly but surely found myself so aligned with her vision and what she stood for that it only made perfect sense for me to continue to uh, just keep tabs on her. And she kept very good tabs on me and I'm immensely grateful for how much it has opened up to me. But I would definitely encourage everyone to be a lot more intentional about it. It saves you a lot of time. It saves you a lot of heartache as well. And I think it's just a great experience. It's great for your network. It's great for your self-esteem and you don't have to second guess yourself as much. Moving to something particularly exciting, 
Uh, you've been working on a comic book for Space Traditions in Africa. Could you possibly share more about the about the book and its release? Indeed, I can. And without giving any spoilers, I'll briefly discuss the content <laughs> a little bit with you all. So I've been working in collaboration with the NPOC of Angola, Marco Romero, to develop a comic book called Ruby Humbi, which, as you can guess from the title, includes myself as the protagonist, yes. a young girl who's very <laughs> enthusiastic and intrepid about space. And she basically uses space to save the day and it's a wonderful coming together of Zimbabwean tradition of space science and technology. And we hope that through this creative engagement, we can really reach out to young people and inspire them to learn more about space. With regards to the official launch date, we hope that'll be in the next few months. We're currently wrapping up on the storyboard and the graphics, and we hope that we can have a finished product for you all soon, but we have the artwork going on and we also have the promotional material circulating in some spaces. We're really looking forward to see what impact this has for space education for the youth, recognizing that a nation's space autonomy is really hinged on the critical mass of skilled personnel and we need to start training them young for sure. That's so exciting. I've, I've been privileged enough to get a sneak peek at the artwork and it's breathtaking so I can't wait. Final question for you. Do you have any thoughts on the role that Space Court and other nonprofits in our sector, uh, what role can they play in increasing diversity and inclusion? I think this initiative is already a great stride in, in improving diversity and inclusion. I say so because when you look at the space terrain as it currently stands, it's so dominated by multinational stakeholders, by developed powers you rarely ever have occasion to listen to the minority voices, which having a look at the Outer Space Treaty are actually those that require the most empowerment as developing nations, as countries that have equal interest in the beneficiation of outer space. So I believe that what the Space Court is doing, especially with women of color and all of the other minority voices that will be included in this segment, is to lend voice to a demographic of people who haven't previously had occasion to do so. And by doing that, we are making space equitable, we're making it inclusive, we're making it a truly multi-stakeholder initiative, which I think was the initial vision of the Outer Space Treaty. And we are teaching everyone that space, at the end of the day, is meant to benefit all humankind. And how can we know if it's benefiting all humankind if there's no active feedback? So this platform is really doing an immense, immensely great uh, thing. And I believe that the more that we include different perspectives as well, the more we can also ensure sustainability in outer space. Thank you, Ru. You've raised such insightful points. And thank you for sharing your experience with us and for inspiring our audience today. Space Court Foundation will announce details for episode two soon. In the meantime, please subscribe to our channel, like this video and follow our page for updates.